All right, score. You've been given a free lawnmower. Uh, maybe not so good. Probably should have just hauled this one straight to the dump. All right, you've got it. Now what are you going to do with it? Well, if you stick around, I'll show you what it took to get it from what it was to what it is. Well, you've seen them on Facebook, Marketplace, Craigslist, seen them sitting in people's yards. Free or nearly free lawnmower. Well, this one happened to be free. Uh, I was working on a guy's pontoon boat doing a little wiring and stuff like that on it. And he asked me if I wanted it. Um, you know, the old, it sort of ran when it was parked, but it started giving him more trouble and it was worth kind of stuff. Uh, understand that it smoked a lot, but I just thought I'd take you along and show you what you can get yourself into. We'll find out how bad this thing smokes, if we can even get it started. Well, it was there. He asked me if I wanted it. Said it ran, smoked. And, uh, well, what we're going to do is play around with it and see if we can get it to run again. Uh, tie rod ends in the steering are wore out because the tires wobble around a lot. Dex had some work done on it, but uh, amazingly enough, around the bearing shafts in the middle there, it's solid. Uh, tires seem to be, amazingly, they hold air and they do not seem to be dry rotted. Somebody's worked on trying to get her started though. We got wires disconnected back here. We got a nut taken off of there. The starter solenoid's disconnected. Somebody's disconnected a kill switch on the seat. So, we shall see what we can do. I'm gonna hook a booster battery up to it with some cables over there and dump a little gas into it with a little bottle with a little tiny hole punched in the top. Dump that straight down the carburetor and we'll see if it'll pop. And then we'll go from there. First, let's see what we have here, chaos and confusion. Um, this is gonna have to be grounded I'm sure by bolting it to that. Got the ground clamp to the chassis right here. Got power to here. And I'm just gonna wiggle this around see if I get a bite on that. And nothing. There could be some bad safety switches. So go straight to that contact. We'll take you straight to the starter. Spins over. All right, now we got to figure out why the key doesn't work, and if that doesn't take too long to do, we'll work with that. But if it takes too long to do, it could be because this is not grounded to anything. All right, I've clamped this ground wire under here. Well, it's green, so I'm assuming it's a ground wire. And make sure this gets contact. Spinning over. So I've moved my gas can to the far side of the shop in case we have any backfires or pops. And what I have here is a little water bottle with a little fuel in it and a small hole punched in the lid of it. And what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit of fuel down the carburetor and that'll let me know if I've got ignition. Well, it should. So let's see what happens. All right, we have a fuel leak at the fuel pump. No, is that water dripping off it? That's water dripping off it. All right, false alarm. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do is take the spark plugs out and check those, see if there's actually any spark. Uh, you know what? Yeah, 
spark plugs got to come out anyway to find out what's going on in there. Woohoo! A lot of trash around that plug. Yeah, I'd say he was telling the truth when he said it burned some oil and smoked. And we can add that it looks like it leaks a lot of oil somewhere. I have never felt the need to clean spark plugs in a parts washer, but these are really really bad. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. That carbon is completely solid to the top. Yep, I would say it definitely uh, was burning some oil. All right, I have what I think are reasonably clean spark plugs. They're not perfect, but I'll bet you if it's gonna run, it'll run on these. So what I'm going to do is put the plug in, hit the starter, and see if we got one part of our magic. And that part will be spark. Whoops. Come on. All right, spin it over. We'll see if we got spark. Oh, yeah. Well, by the way the starter sounded when it pulled it through, it does have a little bit of compression. And by pouring fuel straight down the carburetor, we should have enough fuel to make it run. So let's see what happens when we put these plugs back in. And always make sure spark plugs go in by hand. That way you're sure you don't have anything caught in the threads and you're not cross-threading them. And just a little bit of torque at the end. All right, plugs are back in. First, I'm going to try this without priming it. I'm just going to pull the throttle all the way up to the start position and give her a spin. And that reveals nothing. No bang bang. Interesting. Magic starter in a can. starts and runs. started it ran it turned off with a switch and man is there a lot of smoke up underneath of the exhaust there's water just dripping out of right here why would one valve cover be full of water it's full. 
That should have drained out of there into the crankcase completely. Ah, that's a lot of water. And it has hardly any oil mixed with it. Well, that answers that question. See how that gasket's folded? That gasket's been in like that for a long time. And it's all rusty right here, so that's from rain and stuff getting into it, but man. That would have been leaking oil like crazy if it ever really ran very much, but it wasn't really covered in oil. I mean, it was dirty, but it, I don't know. More mysteries. I'll pull the other one, see what it looks like. Can't get the drain pan under this one, so I just tuck some plastic underneath of it. Try not to make too much of a mess here. That's kind of odd. There should have been some oil run out of that. At least a little bit. The oil drain back is on the very bottom edge, but you would think there'd be at least a spoonful of oil in there. But everything does seem oily over here. All righty then. Well, this gasket's all in the right place. I'm still puzzled why the other one was so full of water. You would think the water would run out of the oil drain back and not have stayed in there. I mean, there was a quarter cup, half cup of water in there. Well, this is what you get when you get something for nothing. You get nothing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm pulling this rocker arm off right there, and I'm gonna pull the push rod out of the way so I can clean all of that out and find out if the drain back holes are plugged up or why this was so full of water because it had quite a bit of water in it. All right, I've got it all cleaned out. I found the drain back hole and cleared the sludge out of it so that the oil can drain back. Now I'll just put the rocker arm back in it, put the valve cover back on it after I straighten the gasket out and see what happens next. All right, it actually started and ran a little bit, but I decided to pull the cover off of it and clean it all out on the inside because I figured this is what I would find. Insulated cylinders. I've already started pressure washing this side. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it all up. All right, I got it all cleaned up. I got it reassembled and uh, attached to the lift. Hope I don't overstress the lift. Anyway, let's see, what have I done since I videoed last? Nothing really other than clean it up, put it together, and oh yeah, I inspected the deck. I'll show you that in a minute, the problem I found. And that right there looked a little bit dangerous, so I made a cover for it. Steering has a lot of play in this thing. And that is because of these little plastic bushings that they used. Talk about your quality construction. This is your tie rod end. And this is the other end of your tie rod. And this little piece of plastic goes over this bolt. And that's what steers the tractor. Is that questionable? Yeah. I wouldn't use that on a kid's power wheels. I mean, a six volt power wheels at that, that thing would last what? Maybe an hour of operating time before it starts breaking down? <laughs> cheap, cheap. Take two.
Well, I'm guessing you'll be able to see the difference here. That's the old one on your left and the new one on the right. I would say that helped quite a bit. It ought to last, oh, maybe three or four hours of operation before it wears out again. But we'll see. All right, I do not have a mic on right now, so we're gonna see how this works, but uh, it has about enough fuel in it to run it for maybe a minute. And uh, I put a battery in it, see if we got any light. We got nothing. We got nothing. Nothing. Oh, this right. And I can get in here without getting my hand completely in the way. It's disconnected. Right there. Come on. Right there. That is the starter from the key that goes to the solenoid. So we'll see hooked to a little connector back here. I didn't get it hooked up. I'll try that. All right, battery back in. Wire has been hooked up to the key switch. So let's see what we got. Give it a little bit of throttle. Choke it up. Okay, if you watch this long, you're ready to repair your own lawnmower. So here you go, place your bets. What do you think it is? Bad battery, bad wire, bad starter, or battery none of the above? Power to kick through. going on there because when I had it hooked up to the other battery it would crank over and I'll give you a hint all three of the first answers are wrong I already know what's wrong with it it's happened to me before and I saw the end of the video <sighs> well probably the most aggravating part of this about is that I've already had the valve covers off because this valve cover was leaking I went ahead and took the other one off checked it you saw all that well I know that brakes and stratons, if the intake valves get too loose, they have a compression release on the camshaft that bumps the intake valve to relieve compression so the starter can spin it over. I guess I was just in a hurry, didn't bother to check it. Anyway, the intake valve was supposed to be four thousandths of clearance. Both of these intake valves were right around 12, 13 thousandths clearance. I've had this happen to me before where it wouldn't pull itself through compression with the electric starter. And that is why people don't take free lawnmowers because all the little things that are wrong with them at this point, you just got to keep messing with them. But that's what it takes to get them close to perfect. And that's what we are shooting for here. Close to perfect, not perfect. All right, as you can see, valve covers are back on, valves are adjusted. I've hooked a battery up to it. You're about to see this attempt live. And if the camera suddenly cuts off and goes black, it's because it overloaded from profanity. Because this is starting to get aggravating. What? All right, that's the difference that a valve adjustment makes. And it's just hooked up with jumper cables back here. All right, so uh, where are we at? Yeah, we've put it all back together. We've adjusted the valves. We've cleaned up all the terminals. We've put all the parts underneath of it. And it just spun over. So now I'm actually gonna attempt to start it. And if it doesn't start, I don't know what's gonna happen, but it should spin over. Three, two, one. <laughs>
Let's go mow some yards. The work I did to the deck and a couple other minor things will be in a separate video. Also coming very soon will be a video on modifying the steering so that both front wheels go the same direction when you turn the steering wheel. That's uh, really quite a cheap setup they got there. Well, there you have it. A lawnmower that works, runs, and uh, it's a little wider than my previous lawnmower. Uh, it was already broke. Finished the tail light off on my trailer, boat trailer. And that's what it takes to get a free lawnmower. Um, I think I spent three days messing around with it. I mean, I didn't spend three full days working on it, but it takes a lot of work to fix a, fix a free lawnmower and get it to the point where it's usable. Now we'll just see how long it lasts. And uh, maybe a couple months down the road, if I get somebody to actually use it on a big enough yard, mine's not big enough, I'll let you know if it survived for very long. But it seems to run great. I replaced that one bearing in the deck, replaced the uh, plastic bushings on the steering arms, and resealed the valve cover gaskets. Adjusted the valves, because it wouldn't crank. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Alright, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.